Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you John Hodiak in Robert Finch's The Desert Shall Rejoice on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present our dramatization of a play with a wonderful title, The Desert Shall Rejoice, a title which the author, Mr. Robert Finch, took from that wonderful passage in the Bible, the wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom like the rose. Mr. Finch wrote much for the theater, but nothing more appropriate for this time of the year than the desert shall rejoice. It is indeed a portrayal of the Christmas spirit against the colorful background of our own America. And I think you'll find its chief character, Nick, is one that stays in your mind as strikingly as it will in mine. And we're additionally privileged to have starring in this part one of Hollywood's most interesting and forthright young actors, John Hodiak. Now, Frank Goss, may we have a word from you? For a Christmas greeting your friends will long remember... Make your selections now from the complete Hallmark collection on display at the Friendly Store where you buy Hallmark cards. Whatever your taste, whatever your budget, you'll take special pride in sending Hallmark cards. And on the back of every one is the identifying Hallmark that says, you cared enough to send the very best. Hallmark Playhouse, starring John Hodiak, in Robert Finch's The Desert Shall Rejoice. Some miles out on a highway through the Nevada desert is Nick's place, a small and lonely tourist camp. It's Christmas Eve, and the owner, Nick Catapuli, has just finished installing a huge electric sign in the shape of a star above the main building. At the moment, he's viewing the result. I don't get it. I break my back getting this sign on the roof. I spend a whole day putting 700 bulbs in it. It cost me 500 bucks, and it doesn't work. Are you sure you put the switch on, Nick? Rosa, be still. Stay out of this. And that singing back there isn't helping any. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't be having this trouble. Oh, me? Did I put the sign up? Did I connect it? No, but you talked me into buying it. I wanted to buy a small sign. It would have said, Nick's Place, Cabins for Tourists, Nick Carapuli, Prop Proprietor, Cafe and Connection, but no. Well, you had to have a 20-foot star without even a word on it. Why do I listen to you? Nick, I still say, why don't you turn the switch on? If that doesn't work, then call on an electrician. Rosa, for five years we've been married. For five years I've fixed everything around this place without your advice. Leave me alone. Oh, Nick, it's Christmas Eve. Our star's got to work. It's not our star. It's your star, so you make it work. Oh, Nick, I'm sorry. Well, that won't help the sign get fixed. I've tried everything. Nothing works. Let's forget it. Oh, Nick. Oh, Nick, you've you, you got to find the way to fix it. I want everybody in the desert to see it lit. I want everybody to know that Nick and Rosa are celebrating Christmas. There you go again. Can't I ever make you understand how much I hate Christmas? What's there to celebrate? We got stuck again. <laughs> you don't really hate Christmas. No, I love Christmas. I'm celebrating Christmas. Didn't I just give a guy a present of 500 bucks for nothing? Why do you carry on like this? You're a good man. I know you got a kind heart. I don't understand. Every day in the year you behave. But on Christmas... There's no living with you. Come on, let's go inside. It's freezing out here. Senor, you are the owner of this place? That's right. What can I do for you? My wife and me would like to rent a cabin. Please, senor, we have money. A little. I can't help you. 
Cabins are all filled. Please. My wife is very sick. You must help us. We only got so much room, and that's all. We have walked for miles and miles to get here, senor. My wife just cannot walk anymore. Where is your wife? Down the road, resting on the sand. Yeah, this uh, business about walking through the desert. What happened to your car? It broke down. It is very old, senor, and, and not so good anymore. So we'll leave it and walk and walk. Are you uh, sure your wife is as sick as you say she is? My wife is very sick. Okay, you got yourself a cabin. Go get your wife. We're going to make somebody move, Nick? Eh, something like that. We're giving them our cabin. Oh, Senor Nick, you are a good man. Yeah, well, go you are... get your wife before I change my mind. Oh, Senor Nick. Senor Nick, Go I... on, you're wasting time. You said your wife was sick. Oh, Nick, what a fine thing to do on Christmas. Well, what's Christmas got to do with it? You know, the rates are $3 a night. Cash before you move in. Senor... We do not have the three dollars. Go on. Go get your wife. Don't worry about the money. Gracias. Gracias, senora. Uh, what's your wife's name? Maria. I am Jose Santos. I go bring my Maria. The next time, Rosa, I'll run my own business. You know, Nick, the size of a man is the size of his heart. You don't fool me. You're a big man. Ah. Nick... He said his wife's name was Maria, and his name was Jose. He said that, didn't he? That's what he said. Come on, we'll move out of our cabin. Nick, what does Jose and Maria mean to you? Two people that are broke named Jose and Maria. Jose and Maria. Joseph and Mary. Now, don't start getting a pipe dream. I talked to Jose. He has two hands, two feet, and he isn't what you think he is. And you gave them our cabin. I have such a funny feeling inside of me. As if this will be a night we'll always remember. What are you expecting, Rosa? A miracle? I don't know. Maybe. When your miracle arrives, order me a new sign. One that works. I'm going inside. And Rosa, tell the people in cabin four that if they don't stop singing that hogwash, I'm going to throw them out. <laughs> Coffee, please. Hey, you got a bad cough. It's uh, none of my business, but what are you doing out on your shirt sleeves on a cold night like this? You said it, mister. It's none of your business. Look, brother, I don't have to serve you. Go on and beat it. Oh, oh wait a minute. I, I didn't mean to be fresh. You can still beat it. Nick, that's no way to treat a customer. Give him his coffee. Thanks, lady. I don't like his looks, and I don't want his business. Oh, there's nothing wrong with this boy that a little warmth wouldn't cure. Give him a break. Why should I? How do I know he's got a nickel to pay for the coffee? And if he hasn't, you've given away plenty of coffee to people who needed it. Well, what are you waiting for? Coming up. What's your name? Uh, Dusty. I see you've been traveling a long ways. It's been hard, hasn't it? Pretty bad. Here's your coffee. Dusty, why don't you have supper with Nick and me? We don't have anything fancy, but it's Christmas. And you'd do us a favor if he shared with us. <laughs> and don't worry, Nick won't bite you. He doesn't mean what he said. Uh, no, thanks. I, I, I can't. I... Oh, come on. Don't be embarrassed. I'll set a place for you, huh? I, I, I can't eat with you. I, I don't want to eat with you. Lovely boy. Come on, drink your coffee and get out. There's your Christmas spirit for you, Rosa. Give a guy a helping hand and you'll always get a kick in the face. Excuse me, I... I'm just so tired I can't think. I'm grateful to you, lady. Honest, I am. And, mister, Christmas means an awful lot to me. You're so tired you can't think. You haven't got a coat on your back and you look as if you haven't eaten in a week. How can Christmas mean anything to you? Why don't you ask yourself what can it possibly do for you? I don't ask Christmas to do anything for me. It's me that wants to do for Christmas. You see, Christmas gives me hope and the feeling that I can do something for myself. And more important than that, it means giving to my family. 
Giving them presents and looking at their happy faces when they receive them. Without the presents, they're pretty unhappy, huh? Well, that's what I'd call real love. Look, mister, you've got a blank spot. A little faith wouldn't hurt you. You're a guy who could really use Christmas. Why? So I, too, could wind up without a coat on my back? Nick, listen to Dusty. He's right. You're wrong. Pleased to meet you, St. Dusty. Where do you park your wings? You don't know it, but you've just become part of Rosa's fancy miracle. Nick, maybe you're right. I don't know, Dusty. I never saw him before in my life. But I only know goodness will come from him. What's the use? Come on, Rosa. You ready for dinner? I'm ready. Warm yourself by the fire, Dusty. And, mister, when you finish your coffee, leave your nickel on the counter. You still around? Takes you a long time to finish a cup of coffee. It sure does when you have a lot of things on your mind and you don't know the answers. Well... Do your thinking somewhere else. Hey, what do you got against me? Just that you've been here too long. Thanks for making up my mind for you. I got a gun in my pocket. I I, I have never used it before, but I'm going to now if I have to. You gone crazy? Unlock your cash register and hand over the money. I knew I was right about you. What took you so long getting around to this? Does it matter? Just hand over the money like I asked you. Said in true Christmas spirit. Here, $82. We worked hard for this. I'll take $20.05. Well, it's nice meeting a cut rate stick up, man. Say what you want. <laughs> Hand over $20.05. Here. Tell me, what's the odd nickel for? That's something you wouldn't understand. Your wife ordered that coffee for me. I couldn't steal from her. Here's the nickel. Would you like me to get the crying towel for you? That's just what I figured you'd say. You ought to take time out and study your wife. You might learn to be a human being. You're preaching to me? Interesting. Rosa said you had goodness. She really believed. I feel sorry for her when she finds out what you are. How would you like to face her? If you try to call her, I'll kill you. That's what I thought. When you've got your money, why don't you beat it? And while you're at it, take the rest of my money. You'll still get the same five years for it. Where do you keep your car? I can't help you there. Somebody's using it. Are you telling the truth? No one's ever accused me of being a thief or a liar. Make up your own mind. Doesn't matter. I'll get one from one of your tourists. Before I go, there's something I want to tell you about myself. This isn't a confessional. I'm not interested. You, you got to tell her for me that I'm sorry. I, I never wanted to hurt her. I didn't even want to hurt you when I first came in. That's very touching. I'm desperate. I, I, I have to have money. All that keeps running through my mind is that I have to be home with my family for Christmas. Mister, I fought my way across the country. I got my brains kicked in by railroad dicks. I, I hocked my clothes to keep from begging and stealing. I, I slept in the open, and there were times I was so cold I wished I was dead. I got this... <coughs> and I'm almost home. You're going to use my 20 bucks to buy the wife and kiddies a present. You'd steal rather than walk in empty-handed. Malarkey. I'd do anything in the world to make my wife and kid happy. How happy do you think you'll make them when you're sitting behind bars for stealing their Christmas presents? I've gone this far. I'm not turning back. Well, you're on your own. Go on back to the cabins and wave your gun around a little. You'll get your car. Go on, beat it. You make me sick. You'll tell her for me. I, I didn't mean to hurt her. I'll tell her just what I think of you. In my own way, my own words. I'm leaving now. Mister... Don't stick your head out of that door. I'm no hero. It's the only head I've got. Nick, what are you and Dusty talking about? Oh. Oh, he's gone. Yeah. He's gone, all right. I always thought I was a smart fella, Rosa. But I'm not. I can't understand how guys spend... 364 days a year, cutting each other's throats, beating their wives, stealing from one another. And, Rosa, I'm sorry for your sake that it can't be different on Christmas. Before James Hilton returns to present the second act of The Desert Shall Rejoice, starring John Hodiak, 
Here's a suggestion just in time for last-minute Christmas card buyers. Pay a visit tomorrow to the friendly store where you buy your Hallmark cards. You'll find all kinds of Hallmark Christmas cards that say what you want to say, the way you want to say it. Cards that express Merry Christmas in just about every way there is to express it, with pictures of a jolly Santa Claus, of frosty evergreens and newly fallen snow, with colors and designs as cheery as the decorations on a Christmas tree. There are special Hallmark cards to send to members of your family or to those friends who are so dear to you. Cards to tell mother how much she means at Christmas time, or for dad, or wife or husband, sister or brother, in fact, every member of your family circle. Here's one we like very much. It's the verse from a Hallmark Christmas card entitled, To Mother and Dad at Christmas. Here's a pair of happy wishes, both as loving as can be, for a pair of perfect parents who mean all the world to me. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Yes, whatever your taste, whatever your budget, whomever you wish to remember, you'll find Hallmark cards that you'll be proud to send. Cards your friends and loved ones will be proud to receive, too, for when they glance at the back, as you did, and see the Hallmark, they'll know you cared enough to send the very best. Now back to James Hilton and the second act of The Desert Shall Rejoice, starring John Hodiak. It isn't too much later that same evening. Rosa has been told by Nick what has taken place between him and Dusty. They are seated in their desert cafe as our scene opens. Nick, did you ever know why I fell in love with you? I think so. Do you think it was because you were handsome, had a good job? Well, it didn't hurt, did it? I mean, about my having a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, one day I was in town, and I saw a horse fall down and hurt his leg. And I saw a man cry because he was sorry for the horse. And I asked... What's that man's name? And they said, Nick Catapuli. So I went home and wrote on a piece of paper, Rosa Catapuli. I liked it. So I married you. Yeah, well, uh, what you didn't know was that I saw you before you saw me that day. Uh, the only reason I cried was because I could see you were soft-hearted and full of sympathy. I knew that was the only way I could get to know you, so... I cried. Mm-hmm. Anything you do good, you always deny. Nick, what are you afraid of? People. People who can hurt you. People you take to your heart and try to help. People like you're dusty. That's why we're living in this desert, away from people. Here, we only meet tourists. They rent a cabin, they stay for a day, and they go. We never learn what's inside of them, and we're never troubled. That's like running away from the world. Not everybody's bad. Even the worst person has some good. Rosa, maybe I looked into your heart a long time ago. Maybe I saw too much room there. Maybe I'm selfish. I want it all to myself. Nick, this boy, Dusty, you never called a sheriff. Why? There's plenty of time for that. You'll never call him, because you're like me. You forgive people their sins. You're wrong, Rose. I'm not like you. Nobody steals $20 from Nick Carapulli and gets away with it. Senor Nick, I have come to pay you our rent. That's $3. Oh, Nick, he said before he didn't have it. I told him not to worry. I pay you part now. The rest I send to you when Maria and me get home. It's an old story around here. I've trusted people before. I don't remember ever collecting. Senor Nick, I swear to you, I will pay you. That's what they all say. Settle with my wife. She's in charge of your deal. It's all right, Jose. Whatever you can afford. That's what you wanted me to say, wasn't it, Nick? I'll have it your own way. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Jose, sit down. I'll get you a cup of coffee. Hold it, Rosa. Let's settle something first. That's how it started with Dusty, a cup of coffee. Oh, but this is different. How do I know? Mr. Santos, until a little while ago, I never knew you were alive. I don't know who you are. But I do know who Rosa thinks you are. Just because your name happens to be Jose and your wife's Maria, you've become another Joseph and Mary to her. 
But uh, don't, don't get me wrong. She doesn't think you're the original. But you've become some kind of a symbol to her. My wife and me, we're just like, like anybody else. Except maybe we're a little more tired now. That's all. Jose, I, I, I'd like to bring some broth to your wife. It'll make her feel better. <laughs> you are most kind, senor. You still believe in your little miracle, don't you, Rosa? Whatever you call it. I only know that the coming of Jose and Maria will bring us a great deal of happiness. Come on, Jose. You'll never learn, will you? Wait till I get my friends. They're standing around outside looking up at your star. Come on in, fellas. It's a restaurant or something. Tourist camp. We've been on a trip to town. Curly, Johnny, and me is sort of vacation for one day. Riding back to the ranch now. Hey, that's kind of a pretty star up there on your roof. <laughs> Look better if it ever lit. We were riding along, and we were just about to pass here when I spied that sign. It was just a big star, and it didn't say nothing on it. The boys wanted to pass on, but I said, it's a mighty inviting star. And Buck, come on in to investigate. Well, uh, have some coffee. Yeah, don't mind if we do. Uh, Johnny, I was just thinking. Yeah, what about? All that stuff we bought in town. What stuff? Oh, them presents. Yeah. Presents? Uh, what presents? When we was in town, we bought a lot of things. <laughs> None of us got nobody to give presents to, and it was Christmas. And we was looking for somebody to give them to, and now that we're here... There's nobody here needs presents. Don't you know any beautiful women? Oh, no. We're looking for somebody who needs them. What makes you so big-hearted? Why don't you spend the money on yourself? <laughs> we don't need very much. Besides, this year we kind of felt... We'd get a kick out of giving. This is the first time we ever done a thing like this. We, we don't know how to go about doing it. You're coming to the wrong guy for advice. Nick! Nick! What's the matter, Rosa? Oh, Nick, hurry. Calm down. What are you trying to tell this me? This is no time to talk. Just call the doctor. For what? Maria! A baby! Maria, a baby! Oh, well, what are you waiting for? Phone the doctor. I'll go back and help her. How about that? <laughs> I guess we come to the right place after all. We sure found somebody to give our presents to. If you don't mind, Mr. Curly and Johnny and me, we'll hang around till that little old baby comes. And the three wise men brought gifts. <laughs> I'm glad you're looking at that star, mister. Well, how do you like this? St. Dusty's back. You sure went through that 20 bucks in a hurry. Oh, no. I found a better use for it. I'm going to give it to a friend. Here, friend. What kind of a routine are you giving me? I've been thinking that this 20 bucks will do you a lot more good than me. How many sermons do I have to listen to from a stick-up man? The 20 bucks would have only bought presents for my wife. Might buy you a whole new soul. <laughs> What's the matter? No cynical remarks? That I hit home? Look, you stole 20 bucks from me and now you're giving it back. Does that make you a hero? Anything but. I rate myself about the lowest guy that ever lived. Well, aren't you worried about the sheriff coming after you? Yeah, I was worried. But I'm not worried anymore. I'm giving myself up. That's a miracle. And we're overstocked on those today. Why didn't you stay gone? What did you come back here for? To buy you $20 worth of faith in humanity. Okay, you made your purchase and here's your change. Keep the 20. Blow. Happy New Year. You sure are a hard-boiled guy. I sure am. As you go, why don't you uh, leave your gun with me? I never had a gun, mister. And if I had one, I wouldn't know what to do with it. Something else. For a man who says he hates Christmas... 
You've got more heart than anybody I ever knew. Uh, don't let it fool you. I never had a heart. If I had one, I wouldn't know what to do with it. Well, thanks, mister. I'm going home. A Merry Christmas to you. Yeah. yeah. Nick, isn't that Dusty leaving? Yeah. He uh, brought me a present. He returned the $20? Yeah. And he gave me something else. Uh, how's Maria? Oh, Maria's fine. She had her baby. It's a boy. That figured, and on Christmas Eve, too. Well, I gotta admit that your miracles are sure stacking up against me. Nick, what was the present Dusty gave you? Faith. And maybe the first happy Christmas I've ever had. Oh, Nick. Nick, you believe? Rosa. The star. It's lit. But there's some more of your miracle. No, Nick. It's not the lighting of the star that's the miracle. It's your finding faith. That's the miracle. But the star, it's lit. Oh, Nick, you always were a stubborn guy. You'll never change. Believe me, it's no miracle. It always works when you throw the switch on. That's where you're wrong, Rosa. It is a miracle. The brightest star is still shining in the east. Before James Hilton and John Hodiak return, I'd like to say a word about a wonderful gift that's waiting for you. It's a Hallmark date book. So compact and beautiful, you'll want to carry it everywhere. So useful that you'll always be referring to it. Every day of the coming year has a place in it with room to jot down things to do that day. And spaces for names and addresses of people to remember on important days like anniversaries and birthdays. There's even a section for your next year's Christmas card list, arranged so you can easily check the cards you send and the ones you receive. And this exquisite Hallmark date book is your Christmas gift from the friendly store where you find Hallmark cards. Better stop by for yours real soon. Everybody's going to want one. Here again is James Hilton. Thank you, John Hodiak. That was something true and good and memorable. We shan't forget it. And for all of us in the Hallmark family, may we wish you the best of everything this Christmas season and in the coming year. Thank you, Mr. Hilton. At this time of year, it's mighty easy to fall right in with a spirit of friendliness and fellowship that made Christmas the great spiritual force that it is. And I might say that you Hallmark people are doing such a fine job of keeping this spirit alive with your cards. Each time a person gets a greeting from a friend, it helps to spread the meaning and the feeling of Christmas. Yes, indeed, and we're delighted to have you with us. Please do come again. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our story tonight was adapted for radio by Jack Rubin. Our music is by Lynn Murray, and our director-producer is Dee Engelbach. Uh, do you mind if I ask your audience to listen in particularly next week? Why, of course not, John. Because next week, James Hilton himself will tell you a great story. The story of that beloved Christmas carol, Silent Night, and how it came to be sung around the world. And the following week, Mr. Hilton's own great book, Lost Horizon, starring Herbert Marshall. Well, thank you, John. So until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. John Hodiak will soon be seen in the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer production, Command Decision. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all. This program came to you from the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>